Hey there, my name is Gary Sims and this is Gary Explains. Today I want to look at big O notation, which is a way of explaining the complexity of an algorithm and then to look at a kind of an internet nerdy joke and to see why that is funny. So if you want to find out more about big O, please let me explain. Okay, so let's start off by uh, seeing whether you can sort three numbers. I'm going to throw three numbers up here on the screen and I want you to mentally put them into ascending order. Okay, you ready? Here you go. Now, I reckon you probably did that in under a second. You were able to quickly look at those numbers and put them into the right order. So now let's try a second experiment. I'm going to throw up some more numbers and again, I want to see if you can put them into ascending order. You ready? Here we go. Now, obviously you probably weren't expecting that, but you see what I've done is I've shown that with three numbers, you were able to sort those probably in under a second, let's say a third of a second per number. When I put a load of numbers on the screen, 60 numbers in this case, I'm pretty sure that even if I left you for 20 seconds, 30 seconds, maybe even a minute, you probably wouldn't be able to put them into uh, or the right order. And that's showing you that here, when you had a small number, you were able to do it quickly, but when you had a bigger set of numbers, you weren't able to do it in a linear fashion. So if you were able to do three numbers in one second, you should be able to do 60 numbers in 20 seconds, but that's probably quite challenging. Now, obviously, if you were doing this all the time, if you had a job where you had to index things or file things or put things in the right order in some kind of uh, you know, office or you know, files, papers or whatever, you'd probably come up with a scheme and you'd come up with a method of which you knew that you could actually get these things into the right order fairly quickly. And that's an algorithm. What you do is you create an algorithm for how you're going to sort this data. So what big O notation does allow us to describe the complexity of an algorithm based on the size of the data that's coming into it. So we already saw that three and 60 actually require very different amounts of time because of the way we were doing that sorting. So let's start with a simple example and that is O of N and N is the size of the data. So that means that as the uh, data increases, so does the amount of time increase in a linear fashion. So if you had 10 items, it would take 10 iterations. If you had 100 items, it would take 100 iterations. Now I'm probably gonna use time and iterations and steps interchangeably because it helps us understand. If I was able to do something on 10 numbers, let's say in one second, then if I had 100 numbers, I could do it in 10 seconds or it's 10 steps, 100 steps, 100 iterations, however you want to express it. So an algorithm with linear growth is relatively good because at least you can work out the bounds of what is computable. Now, of course, we're talking in terms of complexity because every computer has a different speed. So if you ran an algorithm on, let's say, a Raspberry Pi, that's going to complete in a very different time than if you ran it on a high-end uh, desktop computer. So that's why we're talking about how many iterations it takes. And then you can apply that to the amount of computing power that you have to see whether that job is computable within a reasonable uh, amount of time. If it takes till the end of you know, the century or something, then that's not gonna be reasonable. If it takes an hour or a day, then maybe that's acceptable with inside of the job that you're doing. If it takes half a second, well, even better. So better than O of N is O of log N. And because logarithms don't grow linearly, they grow logarithmically, what that actually means is that while there will be a slight increase in the number of iterations, the amount of time it takes to run the algorithm, as N grows, it won't actually grow linearly, it's actually a much gentler uh, increase. And so that means that actually an, uh, an O log N algorithm is very, very good, and it will still work well for larger data sets and for smaller data sets because actually it doesn't take that much longer. And the real aim in many parts of computing is to have an algorithm that's O1. And what that means is it takes a fixed amount of time. So if you have to process 100,000 pieces of data, it will take the same amount of time as it does to process 200,000 pieces of data. So you can imagine if you are kind of in a big data-centric kind of database or some sort of processing job, then you 
the data that comes in, it doesn't matter how big that data is, you're still gonna produce the result in that fixed amount of time, O of one. And that's very good, for example, the Linux scheduler wants to do that scheduling task in O of one, which means it doesn't matter how many processes are running on your PC, on your computer, when it has to pick the next task that it wants to switch to, it can do that in O of one, it's a fixed amount of time regardless of the number of processes. However, having said that, there is a downside to O of one, and that is this, if I invented an algorithm that I say can process a million bits of data in an hour, wow, great, that's exactly what we wanted, and I can say you can process two million bits of data in an hour, it'll still do it in an hour, oh brilliant, that's brilliant, it doesn't grow, no matter how much data we throw at this thing, it's still gonna give us the result in a fixed time. But the problem is if you throw 10 bits of data at it, it will still take an hour. So sometimes O of one is very good, but actually there is a kind of a caveat that actually sometimes an O of one can mean it takes an awful long time even when the data set is very small. That circumstance is actually quite rare, but it is worth noting. Now I said that O of n was linear, so that your algorithm time, the amount of steps it takes grows linearly according to the size of the data. Another one that's linear is actually O of n log n. So that shows that it's growing linearly, but also there is a slight logarithmic increase in it as well. So it's a much steeper curve than you would get with just O of n. However, it's still relatively straight, relatively linear, and you can compute how long it's gonna take according to the hardware you've got, according to the circumstances you've got, how long it's gonna to take to run that algorithm. But there are algorithms that are actually pretty bad. For example, if I asked you to guess my pin number on my phone and the pin number was just one digit between zero and nine well if you were just testing these randomly you've got 10 chances worst case to find the pin it's worth mentioning here uh, o notation is always about worst case there might be a shortcut that happens in the algorithm that under certain circumstances it happens quicker but we're talking about a worst case scenario because that can happen when you're processing data so if i've got a pin number on my phone and I just say, please find it, well then you just have to pick 10. But if it's a two digit one, well now I've gone from one to two, so N has changed from one to two, but now it's I, you need to pick 100 numbers to find my pin number, worst case scenario. And then if I went to three or four or five or six, you can see that suddenly now it's actually getting bigger and bigger and bigger and it's not linear, certainly not linear, it's actually going up maybe exponentially, maybe quadratically. There are different ways of measuring that growth depending on the particular task. So O of N squared is pretty bad. So every time N goes up, it squares it. And so very quickly, the amount of time, the amount of steps need to run the algorithm grows very quickly. Even worse would be O2 to the power of N. And then the absolute worst is probably something like uh, O uh, N factorial. So, you know, if it was N was 10, it'd be 10 times, nine times, eight times, seven times, all the way like that. So that would really be, and that they would grow to huge numbers very, very quickly. So when looking at algorithms, it's important to look at the uh, complexity and the efficiency of that algorithm. Now I've plotted some of these out on a graph here to give you a visual representation. So looking here on this first graph, we can see at the very bottom is the blue line there, which is O of one. So it's consistent no matter how big the data set is. You can see that uh, the O of a log N slightly increases there at the beginning and then there's a slight rise as it goes along so that's very very nice and then we can see the orange line is uh, o of n so a linear growth a straight linear growth we can see the green line looks pretty bad here o of n log n and that goes up pretty high but we'll deal with that in just a moment and then o of n squared again a very very sharp rise as you go up just a few bits of n the amount of time the amount of processing power needed to complete the algorithm goes up very high of course scale here is very important if we zoom out a bit we can still see the same lines here, the orange line, the green line, but notice now that O of um, N log N is actually not as steep as you might believe. And that's because I've zoomed out a bit to show you that although it is, it is linear, although it's greater than O of N, it's still a linear growth. Okay, but if you then compare it to O of N squared, you can see the, the big difference there. So having the right scale also helps us understand a bit about how these algorithms work. Okay, so now you've understood that, let's turn our attention to this nerdy joke, which is called the alternative big O notation. 
So O of one becomes O yeah, because that's a really good algorithm. O of log n becomes O oh, nice, that will work. O of n is oh, okay. O of n log n is O oh, all right. O of n squared becomes O oh, oh my. O of two to the power of n becomes O oh, no. And O of n factorial becomes O oh, my gosh because you definitely don't want to have an algorithm that runs like that. Okay, that's it. My name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe. Do hit that bell notification icon. And uh, well, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.